Hello again. Hey. Nice to be back. This time for some sleight of hand magic with a little more than a deck of cards, which may not seem like a lot, but it is actually a magic circle rule that all magicians must do at least one card trick. Otherwise, magic could start getting popular again, and nobody wants that. So, let's have one of these chosen so we may commence this feat of pasteboard prestidigitation. That's a posh way of saying we're going to do a card trick. Hey, folks. Hello in the front. I'm going to ask this gentleman here. What's your name, sir? Ben. Ben, can you see from there that all the cards are different? They are. I've got the wrong deck. They're supposed to be the same. No, they're the wrong way they're the same. Never mind. Okay, Ben, I'm going to riffle. Please say stop. Ben, it's got to be somewhere between starting and finishing, but don't worry. I'm going to give you another go. You ready? I haven't started yet, Ben, but I love being keen. Thanks for coming. I'm surprised you haven't got more kids. Ben, please say... <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Please take a look at the card and remember it. Show it to your friends and family. Make sure I don't see. You got it, Ben? Is Have you remembered it? Okay, please place it back in face down. If you could make sure I don't cheat my friends, just watch close. Put it back there for me, Ben. You put it in already? When I wasn't looking? <laughs> well, it's going to be a different trick than normal, folks. I've got a small problem, Ben. You put it back in when I wasn't looking, which means I'm not going to be able to find the card. But I think I know a man who can. It's going to be like one of those old detective shows. The name is Dobson, Detective Dobson. I was in my office one night thinking about the strangest day, the strangest case I'd ever had. It was a missing playing card. You see, I'd woken very early that morning and it felt like dawn, but I was wrong. It was Susan. I looked around the room, the curtains were drawn, but the rest of the furniture was completely real. <laughs> this isn't about to get any better. <laughs> there was a horse's head on the pillow and the light was on, which is very strange, because I don't normally sleep with a light on. <laughs> and who would? What light sleepers sleep with a light on? I'm a hard sleeper, so you can work that one out for yourselves. <laughs> At that point, a woman burst in, opening the door in her pyjamas, which is a fantastic place to have a door. <laughs> she thanked me for a wonderful night. She actually told me I was the most well-endowed man she'd ever met. <laughs> I think she was pulling my leg. <laughs> she asked me to meet her at the bar that night, so I agreed and she left. There was a sleeping pill on the side cabinet, so I woke it up. <laughs> took it. Later that night I headed down to the bar and in she came. She looked, be she looked beautiful in a red dress. There's a small embarrassing mole on her shoulder. He kept jumping up and swinging from her earring. She also had a glass eye but she didn't tell me it just came out in conversation. I said what do you want to drink? She said well champagne I guess. I said guess again. We ordered whiskey on the rocks, realised none of that frozen stuff when she took out a small notepad. I recognised it as belonging to me, but before I had time to ask, she took out a small silver case and from inside a single cigarette. As she put the case away, I noticed that somebody, a mysterious stranger, had had it engraved with three of the most beautiful words. Made in China. <laughs> Being a non-smoker myself, I thought I'd impress with some sleight of hand. Or as they say in France, le jean de moi, the quickness of my fingers. Je n'ai parlé pas très bien français. I rubbed it against my elbows to get enough friction to put it back together and suddenly thought, why bother? I don't even smoke. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but she was having one and she asked me for a lighter, so I offered it to her. She looked surprised. I'd accidentally taken off her eyebrows. I said, you want to see a really big trick? And she slapped me in the face and left. You know, I'm not sure she heard me properly. <laughs> I felt alone. I said to the barman, call me a cab. And he avoided the obvious joke, so I went outside to wait. <laughs> Once outside, the cab pulled up with a jerk, but the jerk got out. So I got in. Took me back to the office where a man was waiting for me, whose name was Ben. Ben asked me if I was on a case. I said, no, I'm really this tall. He said, have you got any leads? I said, leads? I don't even have a dog. And then I remembered my notepad from earlier. My notes on previous cases 
filled with locations, many places for missing playing cards, missing people, and missing just about everything else. Each one different. Ben, would you please call stop? Right there, Ben, stop me on the the right shoe. Ben, what was the playing card you were looking for? The Four of Hearts. I took off my right shoe and was immediately surprised at what I saw inside. Could it possibly be the missing Four of Hearts? Case closed. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.